Hi there. So many data sets these days include geospatial information, latitudes, longitudes, uh, identifying where something is. And so if you're working a lot with mobile apps or anything where there's location involved, you'll come across this. And finding queries based around the furthest, the nearest, or things within a certain distance, there's some complexity in making those things work. So as an example of this, if you imagine this diagram here where you're in Boston and there are five locations, how do you find the nearest location to you? Well, it's pretty trivial to, to compare your location to each of the five and work out the distance between those five. But the problem with this approach is that as the number of locations grows, the number of checks per location starts to slow down your algorithm. So as an example, if you scale up to finding the nearest cafe in Boston, using this approach, you'd actually need to know the location of every single cafe in the whole of the world and compare your location to each one to find the nearest. So this is a big O of N problem where as your N grows, the number of items in the set, the algorithm gets slower and slower and slower. So for small data sets, this isn't really an issue, but today I wanted to show you a really neat solution to the problem that uses geohashing. So geohashes are a little bit complicated, but the key thing to know is that they divide the world into a series of squares. So if you look at this map here where you see G, this represents this area on planet Earth in this larger square. The next letter in the geohash further divides that square into more squares. So you can see now G5 is this smaller square there, and G7 is the one next to it. And this continues to so the third, fourth, fifth letter continue to divide and divide and divide further to the point where you get to the twelfth letter and that represents just a couple of square inches on planet Earth. Now for most searches we don't need twelve letters actually for things like finding retail stores you can do this within five to seven letters. But the method of coming up with the hashes and then finding locations when you're searching for them is complicated and we want to have that handled for us. Fortunately, there's a library called the DynamoDB Geo Library. As usual, there's an NPM package for that, so we can see that here. And what this does is it's a wrapper for a DynamoDB table and it will do pretty much everything for you. So in this tutorial today, we're going to be talking about how to use this library to find the nearest Starbucks. So I was poking around the internet and I found that somebody had created a list of all the US based Starbucks in here and there's something like um, 8,000 or so in the list and then when I looked at the comments even better someone else had converted this into a JSON format so this is perfect for us to ingest into DynamoDB. So let me show you some code that can make that work. The first thing to do is to clone my GitLab repo with the code in it and the URL is on the screen now. Once you've run git clone on that repo and got that into a local directory, just run npm install and that will install all the packages that you need. Once you have the code running, let me show you uh, what you have. So this is mostly taken from the DynamoDB Geo library and I've made some small tweaks just for this example. So the first things to notice are that we have to set a region. I'm using Ohio, but um, that will depend on where you're located. We include the DynamoDB Geo library and we give the table, the underlying DynamoDB DB table, a name. I'm calling it Ask James Where Starbucks. The critical design choice in this is the hash key length. So the longer the hash key, the smaller the squares on planet Earth. But if you have too many small squares, you end up searching through lots of squares to find results. Whereas if your squares are too large, you might find you get too many results per square. So there's a fine balance here, and there's information in the documentation that can describe this further. For searching for retail stores, I found that a hash key length of between five and seven characters seems to work pretty well. Further down, I've got a, t a function here to set up the table. All this is gonna do is create a DynamoDB table with a read capacity of five units. In many production cases, you might want to set this to on demand now that this is that's an available option in DynamoDB. So this will create the table using the library and it will wait until it's finished. So let's run this function and see what happens. So this will take a few seconds while DynamoDB configures the table, but while that's happening, let's go a bit further down and see the next step. So th the second part of this is to load the table with the data. So in this repo, we have a folder called data with the JSON file containing all of the US Starbucks locations. You see there's thousands of those there. 
So this load table function is going to read that data into this data variable and then construct all the JSON needed to make the geo service work. And then this is the clever part and the, I didn't write this, this came from the library, but it's going to use batch write to push this into DynamoDB in sizes of 25 items. But most critically, it's going to put a delay between each batch process. So if we didn't do this, you might burn through your write units in terms of uh, it's just going to slam the table and if you're using on demand, it will scale up to handle this because this is a test and we don't necessarily need to operate that quickly. We're slowing down the import just to save ourselves from WCUs. Great. So let's give this a shot. What we need to do is just change this at the bottom to load table and save and then run the same command. This takes about four to five minutes using the settings that are in the file. And you can see at the bottom, it's writing each batch at a time and waiting one second between batches. So we'll come back when this is finished. Okay, that's done. So looking at the DynamoDB table in the AWS console, you can see now this is our West Starbucks table and it has thousands of stores in there. And the libraries created this range key and the hash key and the geo hash and all of those interplay in the mechanics to make that work. But the good news thing about using the library is we don't need to really know how it works. We can just use the table. It's also worth just showing here that we provisioned for five units, but potentially you might want to switch to on demand. This is a very useful feature for production systems. If you don't know the demand ahead of time, if you have spiky usage. So back over on our code, I can show you now how we can use that table. So you'll see there's a query JS file. And this is a really a very simple query to see uh, how many Starbucks there are within a thousand meters uh, within this latitude and longitude, which is in New York City. You can change this to any value you want. I just picked a thousand meters because within New York, we'll find quite a few Starbucks. So to run this query, we just type node query. And you can see these are all the Starbucks that come back uh, within that given location. Now, if you want to find your own location. If you go to Google Maps, all you need to do is pick a location somewhere on the map like this. I just click a lake there and you'll see the latitude and longitude in the URL. You can cut and paste those into here so you can see which Starbucks are around you. Now I built a small front end around this to show you how this works. So when I click on the map, it will go and find all the Starbucks in a given region. As you can see in New York, there are quite a few. And in the next video, I'm going to walk you through how we would build this front end to make this work. But at this stage, I just wanted to show you how the back end works and how it uses this library to solve this difficult querying problem. It turns out DynamoDB is a great solution to this because it provides very consistent performance, really regardless of the size of the table that it's querying from. Also in a future video, I'll show you some load testing tricks we can do using artillery so we can hammer this database and see what the performance is really like if we simulate very heavy load. But that's it for now. I hope you found this video useful and if so, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.